Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Brittany, and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Zoo. Now, I'm wearing a mask today to prevent the spread of COVID-19, but since I don't share any space with anyone at this moment, I'm going to leave this mask remain down and lowered for the program today. I'm very excited to have you join me today, and I'm going to go over a couple of things with us. Um, so I'm going to be sharing my PowerPoint screen, so let me go ahead and pull that up. Awesome. So before we get started, go ahead and in the chat box, share where you're zooming in from and how many people are watching today. If you haven't already located the Q&A, that's our questions and answers box, you can utilize this throughout the program and put any questions that you have for me in there. Just know that I'm not going to be able to get to those questions until towards the end of the program. Now we do have a tech person behind the scenes. It's Connor joining us today and he'll be helping us out in monitoring the chat. Sometimes I might miss questions or things, so he will help me out with that too. At the end, we will have a quick enjoyment poll, and we thank you so much for your feedback. And some community learning standards. We want to make sure we're friendly and respectful to one another in our interactions in the chat box. And we also want to use the Q&A box for relevant and appropriate questions on today's Arctic topic. We want to use, um, also use the, the chat box and Q&A to interact with one another. Since I can't see you, this is gonna be the best way for me to know kind of what's on your mind or some thoughts that you might have. Also understand that if Connor notices um, any behaviors that need to be changed during the webinar in the chat box, that you may be removed from the webinar. All right, excellent. Good morning, everyone. See, we have Granite City, Bellflower, Wildwood, Overland, Chesterfield, and Godfrey, awesome. So today is our Habitat Arctic. This is our second episode in the Habitat series. Um, I'm really excited to be sharing these with you guys. And before I go any further, I would like to know how you would describe an Arctic habitat in the chat box. Go ahead and let me know. How would you describe the Arctic? I see cold, the color, so white, Snow. Yeah, it can make us think of a lot of different things. Awesome, awesome. So probably about the opposite of what we're feeling right now um, when our summer season coming upon us. We do not feel a lot of that cold temperature. Awesome, and we have ice in there too, frozen ground. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, so with our Arctic, the Arctic itself isn't just one piece of land. It's actually the Arctic Circle is up north. So if you look at the map, you're going to see this line here. But sometimes it's difficult to understand what that looks like. So this is if you are looking at the planet from a bird's eye view in the North Pole zone, so up in the northern point. So the Arctic Circle is not just one um, country. It actually encompasses eight countries. And it's not even a continent. It is eight countries and it's ocean surrounded by land. Now, this white piece here, there's a lot of ice. So we're gonna talk about how ice is so important um, later on as well. Now, so we know where our Arctic is. We know our location right here where that star is. Now we're gonna be pulling up a pole. So you guys are mentioning some snowy ice, white, um, ideas about what the habitat is. And there are some animals that live in colder habitats. And so Connor's going to be pulling up a poll now, and I'm curious to know our thoughts. Are polar bears and penguins found in the same area? Hmm, what do you guys think? Yes? No? Not sure? So it looks like it was almost an even split. So we have yes and no. It's a little tricky. And I really, I like to discuss this because I had to learn this too. Sometimes you might see cartoons or even commercials on the television that show them together. And actually polar bears and penguins never cross paths. And here's why. So our polar bears live up in the Arctic and penguins can live in Antarctica. There's also some warm weather penguins that can live in other areas too, in other continents. So the equator, if you join me for rainforest, remember the equator is right here in the middle. 
So our polar bears are up above and our penguins are down below. They never cross the equator. So they actually don't share space, even though they, they have adaptations to survive in cold areas. All right, next up, let's talk about the tundra habitat. So the Arctic itself is a type of tundra and there are three tundras total. So we have the Arctic, we have Antarctica, and we also have alpine tundra too. Now, the average temperature is very cold for the Arctic. So the average, tem average temperature is negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if I can even understand how cold that would be, because right now it is so warm outside, <laughs> but I would imagine very, very chilly. They have long winters and short growing seasons. Now I found a picture that I wanted to share that kind of shows what that change can look like, but just know that their warm season is still very chilly. However, the top layer of soil that's frozen will thaw out allowing plants to grow, but there's a layer underneath and it's called subsoil and it's, and it's a specific kind of type, it's called permafrost. So the subsoil is permafrost, meaning it never thaws out. So if you can imagine if you're a plant, your roots can't really go through frozen soil. So the root systems on plants in the tundra are actually rather short. Now, that being said, this was one of the really neat um, pieces of information I learned when I was studying about the tundra. There are over 400 flower species that will show up during the growing season. And there's such a variety. Now they're not super tall and they can be very small because it takes a lot of energy to grow tall. And if your roots are short and you're really tall, you might fall over. So this makes sense as to why they're a little bit shorter, more closer to the ground, so they can go through their, their life cycles pretty quickly. And just like last time, if you joined me for rainforest, I had a secret animal. Now, I'll give you some clues. So if this is your first time joining, no worries. I'm going to explain everything. I'll give you some clues. I'm going to have a poll pop up. And if you have an idea, you can put it into our chat box as to what this animal might be. Are you guys ready? All right, here we go. So our first clue for our secret mystery animal. This animal lives its entire life in the ocean. And that's really strange that the ocean picture didn't show up. I wonder if my picture is going to show up. Let's find out. And they eat fish, squid, and shrimp, which sounds kind of nice. They're also sometimes known as unicorns of the sea. So we're going to have at least one of these photos show up. What do we think this might be? Connor's going to pull up a poll. So if you're not sure, maybe just think about an animal group. So entire life in the water, eats fish, squid, and shrimp, sometimes known as unicorn of the sea. So Connor, go ahead and pull up our poll. Which group do you think this animal's in? I see a lot of you have guesses and I'm not arguing with that guess. <laughs> All right, Connor, go ahead and close our poll. We have a lot of mammal and a fish, which I mean, a lot of fish do eat those things and they live in the water, but we actually have a mammal. And if you guessed, narwhal you would be correct now it's really strange i did have another picture over here showing that they're very social so they do live in groups um, but one of these pictures will do sometimes technology can be a little silly <laughs> so narwhals are a type of mammal they're a porpoise and most males have these long and large teeth that actually poke through their lip now it does have sensory capabilities so it can help them sense their surroundings. And something that's really neat that I learned is they change colors with age. So when they're young, they're like a grayish bluish color. And as they age, they get to be more white. All right, moving on, we have some other Arctic adaptations. Um, oh, and I see Lindsay mentioned beluga whales. Mm -hmm. They have some things in common. So Arctic adaptations. Animals have to know how to survive in an area that's a lot colder. And some of these adaptations are similar to ones you might see in animals in our area, um, but maybe just a little bit different too. So looking at the upper right-hand corner, we have a snowy owl. 
And you can do this with your hand. So imagine if your hand was a snowy owl foot and spread your fingers out as wide as you can. They kind of act, their feet act a little bit like snowshoes because they help them so they don't sink down into the snow. Now, some animals also change colors. You've probably heard of the snowshoe hare or the Arctic hare and also our Arctic um, fox. Now they will change colors depending on the season. I found a bird that also does that. This is the tarm again. So again, it'll change in the winter season. It has white plumage or feathers and it'll start growing more brown ones with the changing season. Some animals migrate, so they're not always around, but when there's food available, they'll move through. Others might hibernate like the ground squirrel. And if all else fails, just put on a heavy, heavy coat like this musk ox. I always think about like when I layer up in the winter, I have a sweatshirt and a jacket and a coat and it keeps all my body heat in. Of course, we can't talk about the Arctic without bringing up polar bears. Polar bears, similar to um, our snowy owl, will have those wider feet to help distribute their weight so they don't break the ice um, as they walk along it. They also have these little tiny bumps on the pads of their feet that help them to stick on the ice so they don't slide around. So kind of like if you have really grippy shoes. They have an excellent sense of smell. If you notice that vigorous schnoz, and they can smell a seal an average about two miles away. It does depend on wind and weather conditions though. And a really interesting thing to point out is that polar bears do have fat stores because it's important when there's not as much food around. So they do like to eat a lot of seals and get the fat storage, but they don't have like a layer of blubber all over their body. So blubber is really useful for seals, whales, um, walruses that in that blubber helps keep the heat in. It helps keep them warm when they're in the water. And polar bears, their fur does a really good job of keeping them warm. So they actually have two layers of fur. Um, so they have the undercoat and guard hairs and that undercoat is going to keep all that heat trapped in. So they actually have to worry about overheating sometimes if they run too much. And we have a very specific polar bear at the St. Louis Zoo named Cully. So I'm going to quickly go through Cully's story. So a little bit about his background and how we got him here at the zoo. So Cully started in Point Lay, Alaska, where he was found orphaned and he moved to North Borough. Now from there, they knew he needed to go somewhere who knew how to take care of a young polar bear. So he moved to the Alaska Zoo where he was growing up. He then went to Buffalo Zoo in New York. There was another polar bear named Luna um, that if you know a little bit about polar bears, sometimes they are born in pairs and they learn a lot through play. Luna was also by herself, so they thought it'd be a great opportunity for them to socialize and play and grow together. Now, when polar bears get older, they're more solitary and like to live alone. Hence why he made the last move to the St. Louis Zoo. We have Polar Bear Point, um, which is an amazing, or the McDonald Polar Bear Point is an amazing habitat for him that provides a lot of areas where he can keep cool, including our temperature regulated, super chilled pools. He also has an ice machine. So he has access and choice if he ever needs to cool off um, during our summer season. And this is a picture, just kind of a bird's eye view of what his habitat looks like. Now his keepers give him a lot of enrichment or things to keep his mind and body in tip top shape. And sometimes they make giant frozen, almost like popsicles with some of his diet in it. Now, I'm so excited because I have a surprise guest for you guys to meet today. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Excellent. Now, our surprise guest um, is going to be sharing a little bit more about Cully. All right. Excellent. Uh, so this is Travis, he's a keeper. We are uh, contending with the train right now, um, but here comes Cully too, oh my goodness. <laughs> there we go. Hey everybody, I'm Travis. I am Cully's, one of Cully's keepers. I've been a keeper here at the St. Louis Zoo for about eight years. So I was very fortunate enough to land here at the zoo uh, as a seasonal keeper. 
Uh, so I worked um, with grizzly bears, Indian bears, and sun bears before we got our polar bear. Uh, Cully has been here since 2015. Like Brittany was saying earlier, he just turned seven. He's going to be eight this January. Uh, if anybody wants to know how much he weighs, he weighs about 1,275 pounds. Now, if there's any kids online watching, that would equal seven of me standing right here to equal his weight. And polar bears grow until they're about 10 years old. So he has, he has a few more years of growing to do. So we're guessing that when he is fully grown, he'll be about 13, maybe 1,400 pounds. Now, when he stands up vertically on his back leg, he is 10 feet tall. So for kids again, so when he stands up, his nose will touch the top of the basketball rim. That's how tall he is. And when he's on all fours, he's almost up to my shoulder. So we're almost at shoulder height together. So right now, currently, Cully is eating between 25 to 30 pounds of food. And that's a variety of food. That's beef, fish, a dry chow that's kind of made specifically for bears. It's kind of like a dog food. And then we have fillers in between, like fruits and vegetables, like lettuce and carrots, watermelons, cantaloupes. Um, it is true, all bears have a sweet tooth, including polar bears. So polar bears love everything sweet, even honey. So that stereotypical behavior, canine behavior, is very true to polar bears. What did you do for him today already? Yeah, so Emily asked what I did for him today from enrichment wise. So we try to challenge him every day mentally and physically. So physically wise, I put a huge black tube on this long log where he has to physically stand up and he has to spin that tube to get his food. So that's really doing both things at the same time. What he really loves to do is smash large items, specifically giant car wash barrels. To give you guys an idea how strong polar bears really are, those big 55 gallon barrels, when they're full of water, they weigh almost 500 pounds. And he will pick them up like they weigh two pounds. That's how strong he is. We also have larger barrels that will fill up to a thousand pounds in weight. And he drags those around like they weigh five pounds. So give you an idea how strong polar bears really are. They're, they're pretty freakish overall compared to other bear species. So right now, currently, Polly is in the yard working on another food enrichment. It's a feeder tube uh, that has holes drilled into it. And then we put his dry chow, that dog food like bear food, and he has to roll that around the ground to actually manipulate it to get the food to come out. That's more of another mental challenge for him. It's one of Coley's favorite behaviors that he really does with keeper interaction. He's a very social bear. Uh, he's specifically in the back, so behind the scenes. And he loves doing shoulder rubs against the fence in the back with us. So we'll rub our shoulders and our back against the door right next to him as he's doing the same thing. So it's almost like a personal thing that each keeper has with him. Every keeper is different, how they work with him from day to day, and also personality to personality. Um, he pretty much loves everybody. Um, he specifically loves probably two keepers more than anybody else. We're not going to say who those keepers are <laughs> to make any other jealous keeper or upset. Uh, and there's a couple keepers he's not huge fans of, but he tolerates to a certain extent. Uh, so it really just depends on that individual and that animal as well. Travis, we have two questions for you real fast before we let you get back to work. Sure. Um, so the two questions, do you ever go in the habitat with Cully? And then what's your favorite thing about Cully? Uh, we absolutely do not go inside the habitat with Cully. Um, if that was the case, we would not be standing here talking to you guys right now. Um, he is extremely dangerous, regardless of him being in a zoo setting and him being raised by humans. He still has those natural instincts to attack, not on purpose to kill you, it would just happen naturally because his overall strength uh, is so much more than ours. There's no way we could take anything from a polar bear or a grizzly bear, basically. Uh, my favorite thing about Cully is probably his personality on how social he is. Going back to the shoulder rubs in the back, um, he really tends to do that with me more than anything. Um, I think I spend a lot of time with him compared to other keepers. Um, so the biggest thing is him being very social with us because really you can't really beat what we do every day. We get to work with a polar bear instead of sitting in an office job all day. So that's pretty much how I look at it. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to join us for the webinar, Travis. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.
All right, we have just a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So we met our surprise guest, Travis. That was really awesome to learn a little bit more about Cully and maybe the day-to-day -day and what he goes through. I'm gonna make sure I pull my chat back up too. Okay, awesome. So something that's really, really important to remember, ice is nice and necessary for survival. Why is this? Well, if you remember um, our discussions about food webs or even food chains, there's energy that moves through um, a habitat, through animals and plants. So starting with our ice, there is um, our sea ice will melt and freeze at different um, seasons. So you have seasonal ice and you have ice that's there year round. And if you notice there are different sections in animals and plants that live with the ice and under it and use it for different reasons. So if ice melts too soon um, or doesn't freeze back, it kind of throws off the system a little bit. You see, while we know that polar bears and humans are the apex predators, top of the food chain, it's really important that everything's kept in check. In the bottom of the food chain in the Arctic is sea ice and algae. And so if you don't have enough ice, it impacts the entire system. So just some things to keep in mind on why ice is so important for the Arctic and the survival of the animals that call it home. There are ways that we can help. Learning more about the Alaskan Arctic ecosystem um, and how people are connected. Even though we don't live in the Arctic, our actions can impact it as well. And we want to maybe recycle a little bit more, reduce our waste, our easy ways that we can do this. Another way is to reduce our energy use. So it's the two up, two down rule. Now, before you start looking at the thermostat, do get permission from your parents and have a discussion about it. In the warmer months, if you bump your thermostat up two degrees, it's generally not enough for you to really notice and it uses less energy. Same within the winter time. Instead of um, cranking up the thermostat really, really high, maybe have it two degrees lower. Not only does it reduce our energy use, but you can also let your parents know, it saves money too on bills. So those are some ways we can help. And I know Connor put some links in there too. Excellent. Now we have our final engagement poll. Um, so I can know how you enjoyed today's webinar. I'm gonna stop sharing here. Awesome, so that's gonna be coming up. So Connor, if you'd like to share. And I'll go ahead and pull up our Q&A. So if you have a question, I think we have just a minute, or if you want to type it into the chat box, that works too. Any questions today? What do you like about Kelly? Oh, what do I like about Kelly? So I really like that um, we know so much about Kelly and his story and how he came to St. Louis. I really enjoy how much um, he's just such an active bear. So he, he just seems like he has just a really great personality as Travis mentioned. So I like having kind of his backstory and knowing the connections um, that, that are there. And I see Brian sharing, we enjoy seeing Cully. I think a lot of people do. Um, so he kind of like brings people together. All right, that's all the time that I have today for our questions. And I see we have our poll. So if I didn't get to your questions, I apologize. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, this is our Habitat series, the second episode. We will next Wednesday have another episode. It's going to be on grasslands and it'll be on Wednesday. And if you have any more questions or curiosities about polar bears or our work with Alaskan Natives with our conservation work and partnerships, please check out our website at stlzoo.org. And the zoo, I'm so excited to share the zoo's opening back up this weekend on the 13th. That being said, we're so excited to welcome everybody back. And you can start um, kind of making your plans this week. They are now open and you can sign up for free time reservations. So the reservation times are open online. So you can look at and see um, what's available and make sure to have your mask with you too. Now, um, again, I thank you so much for joining me today and for this cat for kind of a uh, photo bombing on this, this fun webinar experience too. Thank you guys so much again. 
I'm looking forward to Zooming with you again soon. Have a good one.